Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl Amanda, the Buzzed Artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint. So today we are going to be doing something that I like to call Saturday Story Times. This is our opportunity to sit down together and just talk. So for this speed painting, I'm actually making myself a little Santa Claus on a paper mache quote unquote background. Um, I actually placed all the newspapers on the background and then went ahead and drew and painted the Santa Claus on top. This is so cute and adorable and get to see the whole process unfold while we have our conversation. So last week I asked you guys if you can give me a set of questions or maybe one big question you wanted me to talk about it. And the question that I wanted to talk about was from our special fan, Michelle, who asked the question, how did you decide to start your YouTube channel? I have really been thinking about it a lot this past year and I would love to know how your channel was born. I've been trying to think of the perfect way to start off this story. After all, it's changed the course of my life. Do I start when I was a toddler? Or as a high schooler taking studio art classes? Or as a freshly minted adult working engineer who was suffocating in an unfeeling toxic workplace? After much pondering, ruminating, sips of herbal chai tea, I decided to start telling my story about a year ago, in August of 2017. In August, I had just quit my five-year-long career as a mechanical engineer to pursue a life of entrepreneurship. And I was one month into the married life with my husband, Ethan, aka my best friend and college buddy. Now, let me just say this. If you have ever decided to quit a steady, secure job with amazing pay for the future of uncertainty that is being an online entrepreneur, you totally understand the feeling of terror, excitement, frustration, and, and thrills you get every single day that you wake up and know that you don't need to work at an office anymore. And you're trading in that steady environment for a place where how you do in your life is based on what you decide to do with your life. So I just quit my engineering job and I was also working as a paint night artist on the side for almost six months at this point. Now this is something that I don't really talk about very much on this channel and I don't mention this to a lot of people outside of this channel. But I did work as a paint night artist and it was a very interesting time in my life and the way I got the job was much, much more interesting. Eight months prior to this point, I remember it was a Friday night. I was about three rounds deep into a whiskey concoction I had made. Um, I remember having a horrible, horrible week at my engineering job. My boss at the time was very verbally abusive and made every attempt to assert his dominance and, and used a ton of fear tactics uh, on me to keep me in line with my work. Despite the fact that I worked my butt off for him, I still was made to feel like I wasn't doing enough to satisfy him. And this bullying was just not warranted. And, and as of today, I have found out that he was demoted and is no longer a su in a supervisory role, thank God. And I have to say, if ever there's anybody in your workplace that they are making you feel insignificant or small or you feel afraid to go to work, those are big, big red flags that something is not right with that person in charge. And I we reported him to HR and the, the ball went rolling there, so thank God he was out. And it really does still pain me to think or even talk about what happened, and maybe I'll make that a story time for another time. But at this point in my life, I was at a very, very low point. I hated my job. I hated having to take two hours out of my day every day just to go and find parking so I can go to work. My workplace did not have enough parking to accommodate the amount of people it would be hiring. And also we have to clock in and clock out. So every hour, every minute counted for us. Despite the fact that I was an engineer working a salary job, I was pretty much treated on an hourly basis. So the two hours it would take for me to drive from my house, go find parking, get on the shuttle bus to get into work, to clock in and then get my butt into the seat, it took me a good hour to hour and 15 minutes, at least just one way, and then going back home was the same kind of ordeal. Not only that, I had to sacrifice about 40 to 50 hours of my life to my job that I felt wasn't, it wasn't me. In some ways, some of the people in charge were not the best people to be in charge, who were very insincere, and I just felt like everything around me, I was just making the motions, doing what I had to do to get a paycheck, and I felt like, 
I felt like I didn't know myself. And the worst part of it all, I felt like my talents were just wasting away. I loved drawing, I loved being creative. It was the only place where my mistakes were okay and that I felt like I was free to express myself and feel really good. Ever had that one thing that you know you're always good at? For some, it's, it's math or science or poetry or engineering. For me, drawing was my rock, it was my strength. And every visit that I made to my sketchbooks or to the little margins on my notebooks with my doodles was like finding my way back home. For me, it was my sanctuary. And in a very competitive world that is engineering, where you're all where you're always told that you don't know enough or that you know you're dumb, drawing world for me was my escape. It just hurt so much to see that my drawing visits were fewer and fewer and far between. It, it really killed me to see that my talents, my natural God-given talents, were just disappearing. So let's fast forward back to me on that Friday night, drinking a little bit of whiskey feeling a little buzzed, and uh, I was actually surfing the web for job listings online to find something that could possibly get me out of my predicament. And lo and behold, a paint night artist position had just opened. And I thought to myself, you know what, F it, screw it, I just downed the rest of my whiskey, I hit applied, and I just sent in my resume. Now, let, let me just repeat this to you again. I hadn't touched a paintbrush in years, I maybe did like one to two paintings over a span of four years, and that's a big maybe. All of my art supplies were either stashed away in a closet or deep, deep, deep in, in the bottomless pit that is my parents' basement, long forgotten and neglected. So there was no way in hell I was going to get this position. And just that thought alone depressed me to no end. So I shut my laptop, I stumbled my way to bed, and completely forgot about this experience until five months later when I got a random phone call. And would you believe it was the Peyton Knight job? They called, they liked my resume, and they wanted me to be part of the team. Well, as a part-time one, of course. I still worked full-time my soul-crushing job as an engineer, but as I was holding the phone in my hand, I was, I found myself trembling, I was shaking. In my head, I was flashing about a million reasons to say no this offer of becoming a Peyton Knight artist. You don't have time for this. You you don't even know what you're doing. You're not that great of an artist. And needless to say, I felt like an imposter. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you can attest to this. Don't you kind of feel like this artist thing doesn't quite belong to you? <laughs> and I, I, I mean, you kind of feel like a fraud in many ways. And I, man, I felt like a fraud on this phone. What did I get myself into? I never, ever in my wildest dreams thought my application would ever be taken seriously. Despite all these thoughts whirling, swirling in my brain, I found myself saying all in one breath, yes, I would love to take the job. Mind you, I was at work when all this went down, so I hung up the phone, I went to the public bathroom, and did lots of breathing exercises to calm my nerves down. Also, I am fairly certain people in the bathroom thought I was extremely constipated and hence did not come to comfort me. Thank God. <laughs> but despite all that, two months later, I actually started to host my first paint night event ever. For those of you who have never gone to a paint night or ever heard of it before, it's a company that contracts local artists to set up, host, and teach live painting sessions with acrylic on canvases. And we as the artists will usually supply all of those items and have it all set up for a party of people, a gaggle of gals to just get in there, sit their butts down, and paint with us. These sessions usually will last about two hours for anywhere between 10 to 40 people. Oh, and important addition, people can drink, sometimes very heavily, at these events. And let me tell you, it's a rip-roaring spectacle. So as you can imagine, being an artist for this company, I had to not only drive, set up, host a party, which let me tell you is a different skill in and of itself, but I also had to teach a half-tanked group of people with zero painting skills how to paint in just under two hours. Not to mention cleaning spills, sticky bar food, begging for tips, driving long distances, cleaning the brushes, folding the paint towels, hours of prep work, etc, etc, etc. Oh, man, I'm just getting tired talking about it, but uh, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Anyways, despite my doubts and, and my fears of even doing anything as an artist in general, of course, getting lots and lots of constant boosting from Ethan, bless that man. I noticed something happened during my paint night events. It wasn't really all about painting. It really wasn't even about being the perfect party host for me. In fact, 
My paint night events, I thought it was more about building confidence. I have seen every type of person that walk into my paint night events and paint with me. And my favorites were the people who swore on their mother's life that they are only good at drawing stick people, that have come out of my session stunned and impressed with their own art. I actually had this one woman who purposefully slugged two glasses of wine before the sessions because she was convinced that her painting was going to be a quote unquote piece of shit. Her words, not mine. And she wanted to be super prepared for the upcoming painting apocalypse that was going to be her canvas painting. Now this same woman, after my two hour session with her and me just coming over there, coaching her, helping her along, she left my session a changed woman. She had made artwork that she didn't hate, and not only that, was proud to hang it up on her wall. And she told me, she had to stop me while I was trying to clean things up and tell me that she had to come back. She wanted to come back and do more. And that's when something really clicked for me. When we all gathered for these paint sessions, we were all coming together to find healing, to just express ourselves and have fun with paint. Despite the heavy, heavy weight of responsibilities, jobs, kids, marriages, finances that weighted all of us outside those doors, we all wanted to let our inner kids out and just have fun and be safe. And I noticed that that little tinder of inspiration I once had began to start growing again. I started to grow confident and I wanted to help more people let their inner kids out. I just wanted them to sit back and laugh at how too serious life can really be sometimes. And you know what? Life is too serious and it's too short. What happens if I die without really giving it my all? How would I feel if all my gifts and all my talents were just kept locked up and never shared with the world? Is that worth a steady paycheck? Is that worth my life? Will this be my life forever? Always trying, always dreaming, but never doing. Now, this wasn't the first time I had feelings like this. I was not passionate about being an engineer with this company or at all. Growing up, I wanted so much to be an animationist and to really dive into the world of art, but I had it in my head that being an artist meant that you would earn little to no money. And if you did earn, it would take you decades to even earn that potential that someone who is an engineer can earn after four or five years of education. So taking all that into consideration, if my art did not work out, at least I had a degree to fall back on. It was pretty much a safety net for me and a hard one at that. And I will say that I had previous urges to quit, but I just didn't know what I would do next. I had dedicated five years of my life getting a master's degree in mechanical engineering, not to mention gathering over $100,000 in student debt. And the kicker here was I really needed this high paying job as an engineer so I wouldn't have to live on the street panhandling in a cardboard box. So in a way, I felt very trapped. So with all these thoughts rummaging through my mind, I would decide to stay. And the feelings and the urges of leaving grew stronger and stronger with each passing year. I will never forget that feeling of being trapped, believing you have no other option besides what you have right now, and that you will never be good enough for anything else. It just ate at me. I was drowning and I was heading down a direction of unhappiness and, and deep depression. I knew I was better than this. I am better than this. And it wasn't going to happen until I made that change. But six months later, I gathered the courage to do something I never thought I would do. I quit my engineering job. And a week later, I married my best friend and went on a blissful honeymoon for two weeks. This time was a time of great change for me. I was now a wife, an artist, and totally broke. But. I had this burning flame in my heart, ignited by art and the sheer thrill of being my own boss. I revived a personal channel of mine to be centered around health and fitness and then started this YouTube channel, The Buzzed Artist, centered around having fun with acrylic paint, art, and loving ourselves in the creation process. My original intent for The Buzzed Artist was just to make original painting tutorials in the hopes of practicing my form and my skills. And let me tell you, I needed lots and lots of practicing. If you ever go back and watch my first few videos, they are atrocious. Like they are super, super cringy and it's almost embarrassing that I still have them up there. But if you ever wanna take a look at what Amanda did a year ago, go check that out. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody about my YouTube channel besides my husband, not even my family. I just wanted to play with art without all the pressure, the questions or the concerns. And it was only a matter of time before I got my first few subscribers. 
I remember after many tired nights of paint night events, my heart would leap with joy when I read encouraging comments telling me how much my tutorials helped and encouraged them to start painting. And it was with these comments that I knew I was doing the right thing. And before I knew it, my channel started to grow. At first, it was like 30 people, and I was super, super thrilled that 30 people would care enough to watch my stuff. And those 30 turned into 60, which then turned to 100, then 400, then 600. And I was just beyond excited and over the moon, thinking that over 600 people would be even caring about what I had to say or do. I started noticing the numbers were climbing, and with every video I put out, I saw more encouragement from all of you. And after just five months of working as a paint night artist and balancing the life of an entrepreneur, I found myself at a crossroads. Paint night events required large chunks of my time, which ate into my entrepreneurial ventures, handling two YouTube channels and online tutoring. Yeah, I started that too. It was really starting to take a toll on me. So I had to make another tough but healthy choice for myself. I decided to hang up my paint night smock and dedicate all of my time and effort towards my channels. I was officially an entrepreneur, making my way in the world, one mistake at a time. <laughs> so that's how this channel started. This is where I'm at in my journey. And I've just been putting out tutorial after tutorial, playing with art, playing with canvases, doing, doing acrylic art challenges, and just pushing the bounds and experimenting and just honing my skill as an artist. So that is the birth story of the buzzed artist. And for those of you that are wondering what the word buzzed means, it's not that I'm totally hammered while I'm always doing these paintings. I'm just naturally a very bubbly person in general without alcohol, thank you very much. But I also suffer from a genetic form of alopecia where my hair is falling out and thinning. So when I noticed that was happening in my life, I buzzed my hair. And when I did that, I felt like there was an empowering message behind that. And ever since then, I kind of put the word buzzed into, you know, my two channels that I was handling, the buzz coach and the buzzed artist. And it was using these titles that really helped form my brand of confidence and inspiring other people to really embrace themselves and to love themselves and to really just be the people they were meant to be without having to conform to societal norms. That was the point of this channel. Be an artist, love yourself, and wrap yourself in the goodness that is your work. Because if you rely on other people to make you feel good about yourself, you're not gonna go very far. You have to rely on the strength of your own will, your own confidence to get you going. And of course, it's always good to have find a good support group of people who believe in you. And I always encourage everyone to share their paintings, share their work, not be afraid to put their, themselves out into the world. It's a scary thing, and yeah, there will be people that will hate on you, but imagine the possibilities that open up for you when you find someone else who's just like you, who is going through the same things as you, and how powerful that can really be when, when two experiences come together and share heart to heart with each other. It's so incredibly powerful to open ourselves up to that. If you would like to share your artwork with me, you can share it on my Facebook page, which is going to be www.facebook.com forward slash the buzzed artist. Or you can share your work with me on Instagram. My handle is the buzzed artist. So I always encourage you guys to have a little faith in yourselves, to share your work and be proud of what it is that you can accomplish no matter what level you are. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story time. If you did, please be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button, you know what to do, so that you can see more fun Saturday story times from me to you in the future. Isn't this Santa Claus adorable? I'm a huge fan of him. <laughs> and if you actually wanna go ahead and buy this Santa print to have it up on your walls in time for Christmas, be sure to follow the link in the description below and you can go ahead and buy this print for yourselves or for a family member. All right, everybody, remember, love yourselves and always have fun with your acrylic paint. I love you. Bye.